so I'm I'm Helga. I'm from the West. Um, I got into shield painting, so I have no formal arts background. Uh, I was just apparently an artistic kid, um, <laughs> and I got into shield painting when I blew up my elbow and blew up my right arm uh, and was stuck on a couch for six months, uh, going through five surgeries so I could touch my face again. Uh, so shield painting actually became, it was almost physical therapy because I had to move my entire arm to get around shields. Uh, and so I'm a lot, I'm self-taught. I've got a lot of weird tricks. Um, I have gone and gotten to like sit in with a couple professionals uh, and picked up and adapted a lot of my style. Uh, so I have everything from how to paint a shield as a poor kid all the way to like, this is what the professionals do. Uh, and I've fallen into kind of some, somewhere in between, uh, depending on the shield and what needs to get done. Uh, and so please feel free that at any point in this, um, like interrupt and ask a question because I work better off Q&A because then I can give you the specific knowledge you're seeking. Uh, we're probably going to break it up into like three sections too of like how to prep and canvas your shield how to get it ready for painting. And then we're gonna spend the bulk of the time actually on like a little bit of layout, some cheap tricks to actually make your lives easier or your students' lives easier. Um, and how to mess with the shield to give it those final little touches because the extra 15 minutes in an art project is actually what makes it like phenomenal. Um, also my spiel on shields is, hey, by the way, it's disposable art. Don't be attached to your mistakes. Um, I love painting shields because I can give it to a fighter and I know in six months to a year, it's going to be absolutely destroyed. And in six months to a year, my skills are going to be better. Uh, and so I can replace or fix mistakes. I can continue improving and it's not like it's going to be out there forever, uh, which actually my muse adores. Um, I really like the fact that my art is not out there forever. Uh, and so I can crank out shields much faster than I can crank out other art. We're actually going to go over a little bit about the artist's eye, uh, and there's a couple tricks that I got taught. Uh, my mom was actually like a phenomenal artist. Uh, she did all watercolors and everything else like that, and she gave me some really early tricks uh, that have helped me. Um, and so I'm going to try to pass those along to you guys for this. So first, prepping your shield. Uh, prepping your shield is, so I mainly work with aluminum or um, wooden shields. Um, and so prepping your shield is actually key and prepping aluminum is actually more uh, time like it takes more time than it does for a wooden shield a wooden shield typically like you can go like glue canvas like it's really nice it's clean uh, wood builds in and soaks up soaks up the soaks up the glue and so we're gonna go over how to do that um, but aluminum the one thing you must remember with all aluminum shields is at some point they have been oiled um, in the processing in the factory, in rolling them, in cutting them, there is an oil that is put on the aluminum to save the blades or save the rollers. Um, that oil will jack with your glue. Um, you have to clean it off. Um, and you can clean it off with WD-40, break clean, um, straight up like rubbing alcohol will pull all of that off. But you need to make sure that if you're, if you're cleaning it, and you see streaks left behind, that is the combined oil and whatever cleaning agent you're using. That will still jack with your glue. So you need to make sure that your surface is clean before you even apply any glue to that, uh, any glue to that aluminum. Otherwise, later on, you're gonna get bubbling, you're gonna get lift when you add in paint, um, and you're just gonna end up being a very frustrated artist. I know this because I have a shield with 100 hours in it that I'm about to peel the canvas off of because I missed that step. It was my learning, it was my learning shield. Uh, so uh, cost effective also, if you don't want to use like break clean or something else like that, uh, straight soap and water will do it. Please make sure that you know, you're keeping it off. Also, if you're using break clean, please put on gloves. That stuff will eat your fingers. Um, it just, it automatically dries you out real, real hard. Do not get it in your face. Make sure you do not get it in your eyes. Um, any tool cleaning agent, please use proper safety equipment because it will jack up your skin. Um, so I didn't, I have a bunch of shields behind me, by the way, so I'm gonna end up picking stuff up. Um, I have all of my shields canvas, so I don't have an example shield with me for that. Um, but laying down your glue and laying down your canvas, you can use so many different fabrics uh, for your shields. Um, 
you can use colored canvas, you can use printed cotton. Like there is so many weird tricks out there. If you don't feel like painting a shield, literally you could go get Hello Kitty printed cotton and put that on a shield and it's gonna do roughly the same thing. Um, if you want a painting surface, um, I use between seven, I le it's a roughly, it's like a seven ounce canvas, um, either a linen or like almost any grade canvas. I have used painter's cloth before. Uh, you have to get the untreated stuff, not the, not the waterproof stuff, just the regular throw down, buy it at Home Depot uh, painter's cloth. And it is the cheapest and easiest to put on a, uh, on a shield, especially if you have compound curves. Uh, because the weave is loose enough that you have a little bit of bias in all directions with it. So if you're doing like a shield boss uh, and then a regular, so you've got a shield with a raised boss in it, uh, that is actually the best fabric to use because there's enough bias that you can get it over the boss, boss smoothly and then lay it down. You can ease in um, the rest of the canvas around the boss with it and have no wrinkles. It's a pain in the ass. It takes a couple tries. Um, but if you want to do a single piece of canvas for something that's got ridges, best way to go. It's also the cheapest. Um, you can go all the way to buying, you can go buy painter's canvas at almost any art store. Um, I buy it 10 yards at a time. Uh, you can do the same thing. Um, I have found very little difference between the painter's cloth and the high-end canvas. Um, the high-end canvas takes a little less prep. Uh, the painter's cloth takes the paint just as well. Uh, and so if you're on a budget, go to Home Depot, buy painter's cloth. It'll come in a really small square. It'll do one or two shields for you and you're out 10 bucks. Uh, so I've also done it in linen. Uh, linen is really fun to work with. You want to use again, like a seven ounce. I've gone all the way to a nine ounce linen. Uh, linen, when it tears, it shreds on a shield. Uh, so the canvas will tear and kind of you'll get a clean tear into it. Um, linen shreds real fast. Uh, and so you have to make sure that you have it glued down really securely. Uh, and then when it shreds, you don't go fight with it until you, you fix, the, fix the rip. I will go over fixing rips at the end of the class too. Um, linen is definitely the more uh, period uh, material to use. Uh, a linen canvas is super sexy to work with. By the way, as a painter, like it's really nice to work with. It's, it's one of the smoothest services you'll end up getting. Um, but again, we're making disposable art. It's gonna go away pretty quick. Um, if you're doing documentation, do documentation for like, this is what they would have used in period. I used Home Depot's painter cloth. Moving on. So gluing your canvas to your shield. Um, there's a couple different methods. So for a wood shield, um, this is actually the simplest. If you're canvassing wood, you know, any canvas to wood, is it's also the most forgiving. Um, when I do wood shields, I actually use a mixture of wood glue and water. Uh, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, roughly. It, you mix it down to about the consistency of house paint. Um, and so, like, get a painter stick and mix it down. You must use water-soluble glue to do this, by the way. Elmer's glue works fantastically. Um, the reason why this is the most forgiving is literally you paint the shield with it, you paint your canvas with it, and you stick it on, and then it, you can actually slide that canvas around and then let it sit. Um, I use to make sure that I, it stays down and stays tight is I will put it on and then I will binder clip the edges. Like, sorry, I'm pulling them out of my, my desk. Like literally binder clips. Go by the XL size binder clips. Um, note, most of these binder clips are actually made out of metal. So when they get wet, they will rust. Um, however, it's gonna be underneath your edging it really doesn't matter, but don't leave them on for more than two or three days. Otherwise, it will start eating your canvas. Again, ask me how I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've done a lot of mistakes. I'm going to try to give you guys all my mistakes so you politely avoid them. Um, <laughs> also, one of the other, uh, the other clips you can get is uh, Harbor Freight sells the, like, uh, the, there's, like, they're monster clips. I think they're what they're called. They're all plastic. Um, and they're fantastic. Um, get the medium size. They're like yay big. Um, I use those for when I'm raw hiding shields, when I need to stretch canvas, when something isn't sticking right, I'll just like stick the clamp on it and be like just glue right there. Um, and because they're plastic, you have no rust problems. You have nothing else. Um, they're a dollar a piece. Um, it's totally worth the investment if you're doing this on a regular basis uh, because it'll keep your life 
way less frustrating. Uh, I went in and blew $50 uh, and just have a bucket of them that I use. Um, I probably break four or five a year. Uh, and so the turnover rate on them is super slow. Uh, Versus binder clips, way cheaper. Turnover rate is much, much higher. Uh, so I get two shields out of a set of binder clips before the, the rust on them is actually too bad to use. And I'm worried that it's gonna start damaging uh, the canvas. Uh, one of the dumb tricks you can use uh, that I have before in desperation times is you can saran wrap the edge of your shield and then binder clip it. However, that takes the gluing process and it increases it almost exponentially because now you can't get that glue to sweat. So go buy plastic or binder clips. They work great. So just literally for wood shields, you can just paint it on. So you get the canvas on, it'll stick down. Uh, Elmer's glue, you, it will be tacky to the feel. It never really hits that like dry sticky. Dry sticky is bad. It means that it won't actually adhere to itself. Uh, here's and also the fantastic thing with using Elmer's glue on a wooden shield is you're already starting to prep your canvas. So your canvas is basically going to get soaked in this. Uh, so you get your first one down as soon as it is tacky um, and mostly dry. So you can like feel the canvas on the outside and as long as it's not sticking to your fingers, you can actually add an extra layer on the outside of your canvas. Um, and that's going to be your first layer of treating your canvas to prep for painting. Um, I highly recommend using Elmer's glue on wood shields above 60 degrees. Uh, why? Because dry time. Uh, and then stick it in a sunbeam for a day. Um, so I do shields in bulk. Uh, and what I'll do is I will just glue down a bunch of canvas and then go stick them in sunbeams. And every couple hours I go shift them to new sunbeams because <laughs> the drier you get your canvas, the better for your next prep phase. Um, so for aluminum shields, uh, it is a little bit more, it's a little more time consuming, but once you get it down, uh, I can go from an uncanvassed, unclean shield to a canvas shield in about 15 minutes. Um, the first try is like an hour and a half because you want to like double check your stages just so you know, like, but eventually when you get your system down, your system, you'll just blast through it. It's not, it's not a huge problem. Um, so I tend to take the aluminum shield, I will put it on my canvas and I will outline it. Um, the reason why is because I use a spray glue. Um, I use 3M90 um, spray glue. Oh, hang on, I'm sorry, I've got a question down in the chat group. And yes, Elmer's wood glue. Uh, Elmer's wood glue is exactly what I use and you can buy it in gallon jugs. Um, a shield will go through about a fourth of a gallon of that stuff, just so you know, because that, that canvas is gonna soak it up. Um, back to aluminum shields. Um, so I lay the shield down, I trace it out um, because then it gives me an outline of where to spray my glue uh, because that glue is highly sticky and if you just like kind of randomly spray your canvas, <laughs> that, that canvas is gonna like mate for life and just make your universe terrible. <laughs> Um, also, I will outline it and then I will cut out my canvas with like a four inch ease around it. Um, why? Because, well, canvassing a shield is not an exact science. Uh, so when you put your shield down on that canvas, when it starts to bond, you're not picking that entire thing back up and re remeasuring it between the lines. Um, measure with a pencil, cut with a chainsaw. <laughs> Sorry, that's also how I sew. Um, and so the first part that I glue is actually is the shield itself. So the aluminum gets the first round of glue. The canvas gets the second round of glue. Why is because the aluminum cannot soak up the glue. The canvas can. Um, and this soaking will actually cause the glue to dry faster. Um, again, trial and error on this one. Um, and I'm, I'm and so, sorry, I missed it. What kind, of, what kind of glue are you using for canvas on aluminum? Uh, the 3M90 um, spray adhesive. It's um, in the in the um, in the document. It, I've actually got a picture of it. Um, got it. Anybody outside of California too can order this online, and it'll get delivered right to your front door. You can also find it at Ace, I think, yeah. and I found it at Home Depot before. And Ace, Home Depot and Lowe's carry it. It's a it's a really common brand, um, which is the reason why I use it because I don't want to use some obscure thing that nobody can find. Um, do not just trust me on this one. Do not downgrade to the 3M70. Um, 
I have had nothing but problems with 3M70 and uh, adhesion over long-term periods. Um, and I'm not sure if it's just because it's less water, it's more water soluble, um, but I have had some really bad lift problems with the 3M70 that I have never had with the 3M90. Um, and I'm not willing to experiment between the two um, beyond what I've dealt with. <laughs> Um, but avoid the 70, don't go the cheap route, buy the 90, it's like $2 more a can and completely worth it. Um, so do your outline, spray your shield, spray your canvas, and then what I do is I actually grab the shield, flip it upside down so it's now glue to glue, and then I will just gently set my shield in that outline. Um, do not squish it down at this point in time. What you're gonna do is now you're gonna flip the whole thing over. Um, and I tend to flip it all over by just grabbing like a chunk of the shield and just flipping it like an egg. Like do it, because you want to keep as le at least pressure on that shield as possible at that moment in time, because you are probably going to have some wrinkles. You're going to have that canvas doesn't want to completely lay down straight. Um, once you flip it over, you'll actually see your problem spots um, and you can just peel it right back up and then stretch it out and lay it down. Um, and then I go through and I hand lay down my canvas. Um, so I'll pick the longest point in the shield and make a line with my finger. So if it's a heater, I choose one of the upper corners and go to the middle of the curve. If it's a uh, center grip, uh, I'll go from the center grip out down to the bottom uh, and to the top. And then from there, I've got quarters that I can work on. Um, and those quarters, then I'll just hand smooth it down. And then once that shield is down, you'll find a couple little bubbles or anything else like that. That's really, really normal. Um, you can use an old credit card, the cap of the can, uh, or you can go buy one of the, the sticker appliers. Uh, they're like three bucks. Um, and then you're going to just push that canvas down. Again, work from your center out to your edge. Um, and that's going to make it so it works everything out. If you get a ripple or a bubble, what you do is you know, if the, most of them will show up in about this shape. What you do is you apply pressure from the narrow side. Do not hit it on the broad side, because if you hit it on the broad side, you're actually gonna create a ripple in your canvas. If you work it from the narrow side out, you're actually messing with the ease of the fabric and it will just eat itself. It's great. You can do the same thing for a ripple, as long as you haven't like really gone after the ripple, because as soon as your canvas adheres to itself, um, if you press it together, it's going to stay like that no matter what you do. It is, that is now uh, something that shield will contain for the rest of its life. Um, but if the canvas is just kind of touching itself, you can use the same technique and just from the thin edge, just work it out and you'll, you'll watch that canvas do this again and lay down for you. Um, again, this is trial and error. There's a lot of practice that goes with this. Um, and as soon as you get your technique down, uh, you can just fly through putting canvas on shields. Uh, also, Sometimes perfect is the enemy of good um, because you can sand ripples off um, in the next phase. Um, I really like to not have ripples in my canvas uh, because every time you basically cut your canvas, you're giving it a way to separate later. Um, but if you have a little itty bitty ripple, just sand it off. Like it'll be fine in the sealing process, it'll cover it. Um, also, Go ahead and re-canvas your shield if you want to. If, you, if you're really, while well, you're playing with this, the first time I canvassed a shield, I probably did that thing three times um, just to get my own techniques down. So that's just for like a flat shield or basic curve shield. Um, doing a compound curve, I actually use a different technique for canvassing. Um, I don't pre-spray um, the canvas. Uh, what I will do <laughs> is, I'm gonna hold this shield up a bunch and like point at it and do some things. Um, I actually glue in sections on these shields so I can get the right adhesion um, because otherwise it is just a giant cluster of word that I shouldn't be saying while being recorded and teaching. Um, and so doing pavises, um, pavises in general um, are probably one of the harder shields you do um, and they're very, very frustrating. Um, this is also where I came up with the four inch seam allowance basically on doing a shield is because I had a pavise so nicely canvassed right until I hit this edge and I was missing that much canvas. So what I do on pavises and compound curves like this is what I'm doing it is I will actually put glue on the entire curve of the shield. I will then put a line of glue on my canvas. It's just literally a straight line of glue 
and that's the first place that gets put down. From there, I do it in sections where I will hold up the canvas, spray two or three inches of the canvas, respray the shield a little bit, count to 45, and then start laying it over the curve. Um, all the while using the same techniques of just smoothing it down. So I'm actually going to be very, very aggressive about the uh, about how how hard it's sticking on this. If I have any lift spot, I redo that spot. Yeah. Um, when I hit this, this is the the ditch basically of the shield. This is the part where most people have problems. This is where you're going to get the most lift right here. Is I will actually do a little slightly heavier glue on the shield. And then you're going to wait until it's almost dry tacky um, because I use, I tend to go a little sooner than when is recommended so I can lift and not lose my glue completely. This is where you're going to follow the instructions to the max on that bottle. Uh, you're going to wait until when you touch it, it doesn't stick to your fingers at all. And then you're just going to lay it down. And what you do is you run your hands down and into that ditch and you're going to go all the way down the curve of the shield until you get stuck here and then just apply it and then do both sides and walk away for a little bit. Um, what you want it to do at this point is actually let that glue set without pulling on it at all when you're doing just the wings of the shield or the next, the next curve. I've got one in here that has like two curves in it is I'll walk away even for a full day on that and let it dry because I've got to stretch, I'm going to stretch this canvas a little bit. And if this is not set yet, what's going to happen is you are now going to pull it off of it. This is the same rule I use for rivets on a shield, by the way, because um, a lot of the times you'll get pre-strapped shields sent to you. Um, one, I tend to actually de-strap the shield um, and then change out the change out the bolts that are in it. We use um, elevator washers all the time or elevator bolts, um, and we'll countersink them into the shield so they lay flat, so you'll never see any of the bolts on a shield. Um, if you get one where they want to have that, and you got a canvas over the top is stop whatever you're doing. So wherever you're at in the shield, stop, apply a little bit more glue on top of that bolt and around it. And then you're just gonna set it down on top of the bolt, put your finger on it and run your credit card around the outside of the bolt. Um, and that's gonna take all that canvas and suck it around the bolt. And then as you're working the next place, leave your fingers on the outside. So basically you're gonna support that canvas around the bolt while you're stretching away from it. Cause as soon as you start stretching away from anything, it is going to pull off of a raise. Uh, and so just kind of be patient with yourself, be patient with the shield at that moment in time, um, and it'll give you a much, much nicer finish. Um, so to the back side of the shields, uh, I'll move on to just how to finish the back side. So it's the same as the front. Uh, trim your canvas, spray glue. Uh, the 3M90 is really, really nice. Uh, about four inches away from your shield, it's going to catch your inch of extra fabric and about an inch into the shield and you just spray around the entire shield and then roll your fabric over. Um, you are always going to get little ripples. It's really, really hard to see, but there's just a little, there's a little ripple right here in the shield where there was more canvas than there was a uh, shield body. Just keep going. As long as it's a small ripple, it's going to get hidden underneath your uh, edging anyways. It's nothing worth like losing your mind over. Also, if you're a little nervous about doing it, leave that four inches on there for a while. What it's gonna do is you can roll that entire thing over. Once your glue has dried, run a razor blade around the edge and take off as much of that inside edge as you want. So, and it'll just peel right off. Like literally you can just grab it and peel it off um, and it gives you a nice clean edge. It'll give you a really nice finish on the shield. Um, probably at the end of the class, if people wanna know how to canvas the inside of the shield, um, it's roughly the same technique as doing, uh, doing a compound curve, uh, because normally you're, cur you're canvassing to the inside, which means you're going to have to do it kind of a little piecemeal. Um, but it does, it gives you a nice finish. If I'm doing a tourney shield, I always canvas the inside. I canvas the inside with printed, printed fabric because not painting the inside of the shield another 10 or so hours of my life, I'm gonna go find a cool pattern fabric and I'm just gonna put that on there. <laughs> Save yourself that problem. Also, by the way, there's tons of medieval printed fabrics out there. You can get something that looks like diapering for like $3 a yard. Like who cares? Or you can get checky or striped or anything else like that. And it gives that shield a nice finished, you know, a nice finished feel. Mm. Um, and then you're done. Like, then you don't have to worry about it anymore. 
I'm just going to go over it real quick since we're here anyways. Canvassing the inside of the shield. When you do the inside of your shield, do not do this per part first. You're going to actually save rolling your outside canvas for the last piece. Why? Because when you put on your edging, we very commonly use car door edging. If you do not have a protected edge like this, when you put that car door edging on, it is going to lift your canvas. So you canvas the inside of your shield first, then roll this over the top of it. Because mm -hmm. then when you put your car door edging on, what it's going to do is it's going to make sure that both your canvases are protected. You don't get any lift. You don't get any warp. For your back, if you're going to do, uh, you said like something that looks, has a nice print on it just to do the back of the shield. I've noticed that when I spray contact cement onto any sort of light colored canvas, it gets, you know, yellow stains all over oh, yeah that show through and if you're going to paint the canvas anyway that i guess that doesn't matter but if you're not going to paint it then i'm guessing you would recommend like a dark canvas if you're going to do the back of a shield and then con like contact cement it everything that i back is dark <laughs> um but you're totally right um so depending on your glue you're going to get some yellowing or color changes um i use really dark fabrics on the back so i use reds blacks blues um anything that's in that tone you're not going to be able to see um, and I still use my spray cement. If you want to use a lighter color canvas or a lighter color uh, fabric, um, it's probably going to take some experimentation. Um, just contact cement, so like the paint on contact cement will soak your canvas terribly. Uh, just so you know, like it is, it is one, a pain in the ass and really, really slow. Um, but they, that gives me the biggest color changes on the front of my canvases like when i was prepping like that that's where i get these really bad yellow swaths through my canvas the 3m90 has less of that um you'll get kind of almost like a sheen with it um but it doesn't tend to warp the canvas color which is really really nice one reason i like to use that brand is because they actually have a whitening agent in it so it stays relatively clear um so what I would do is I would actually like, I wish I had the answer to that besides play with it um, and or use like an already uh, a canvas with that yellow tone. Um, and then it'll just kind of magically cover itself. Um, also your sealer will affect that. We're gonna go over uh, how the sealer affects colors on your canvas later. Um, and that might, uh, again, through a little bit of experimentation give you the answer that you're looking for. And I wish I had it for you. I'm really sorry I don't. That's great. Are there any special considerations with the type of plywood or wood you choose for your shield? It's been a while since I've used a wood shield. I've used uh, aluminum for a while, but I help a lot of newbies, so I plan to make some more. So selecting your plywood. Um, we actually use two layers of birch uh, plywood, and then we've got a, um, we've got a homemade shield. Uh, oh my god, the word just left my head. Uh, we use it to curve shields, like a uh, shield press. There it is. Um, and we actually use ratchet straps to bend it over and then let it seal. Um, however, you can do that with almost any form of plywood. I really do not go up to three quarters, use half inch. Um, three quarters is way too heavy for newer fighters. Uh, but like the half inch, uh, pretty much like the Home Depot stock half inch is just fine. Like it's going to get the job done for about a year before it starts breaking down. So two layers of half inch? No, so no. when you're doing birch, it's two layers of quarter inch to get to half inch. Okay, thank you. Um, and so the reason why you layer your shields, by the way, guys, is because you can count, you can counter put the, um, the grain of the wood, uh, which is going to make your shields last a little bit longer. Also, it's easier to curve because you got to get your shield wet to curve it. Uh, and getting two layers wet and then gluing between and then curving is actually easier on you than it is uh, if it's just a single layer. Um, that's the reason why they actually did multi-layer shields in period uh, is because by changing the grain, uh, you got a shield that lasted much, much longer. It's also easier to warp while it's still wet. Um, I'm pretty new to the SEA mm -hmm. and I wanted to know if um, you've ever used an old satellite dish to make a shield. They're not gonna survive it. It's too light a gauge. Um, Please, please, please do not use that. It's going to, uh, it's going to warp around you real bad. It's also going to uh, transfer a lot of that force into your arm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, by the way, old, uh, old uh, street signs work just fine. It's actually the gauge of aluminum. You can go to most scrap yards and buy them for pennies on the dollar. Mm -hmm. Do remember that old street signs are, um, we use a T, uh, like a, 
aircraft aluminum is built to flex, uh, which is like T75. I gotta go look it up. I don't have the numbers, but aircraft aluminum is the best for what we do because it's built to flex. Street signs are not built to flex, so eventually it will crack. And so just kind of pay attention to your shield and make sure cracks aren't forming uh, over the long period, uh, over a long period of time. Uh, that's Please strip your, shield, uh, your street signs, by the way. Your glue will stick better or just put the stop towards you. Uh, and then cover it with, with pretty fabric. Okay, so prep. Prep is actually really, really simple. You can actually use multiple things to prep your canvas. So wood prep, really easy if you don't care. So um, Elmer's glue is going to color your canvas yellow as it dries. Um, if you, I'm really big on having a nice white surface because then it keeps your colors brighter. If you don't care about the yellowing, like you, you can use almost anything to prep your canvas. The reason why you prep your canvas is so it doesn't soak up your paint as you're painting. Otherwise, you're going to go through a ton of acrylic paint to just get your color saturated. So prep your, prep your canvas, save yourself hours of frustration later. Um, again, I know from experience. Um, so with, uh, with wood shields, you can use the Elmer's glue again. And what you're going to do is you're going to coat that canvas. It doesn't need to be so like soaked, but like it's like painting a board. You're going to make sure that it's covered and even. You're going to stick it out in a sunbeam and let it dry. And then you're going to use 120 grit sandpaper and you're going to go sand off all the rough edges. You are then going to repeat this process until you get a smooth enough canvas that you want to work on. Um, I highly recommend at least two rounds of this because it's going to be easier to draw on. It's easier to paint on. It does not eat your paint brushes anywhere near as fast. Um, Do you use, maybe I missed it. Do you use any gesso in the prep? Um, I actually don't use gesso because the one time I did gesso, um, it cracks pretty easy. Um, and because I paint aluminum shields, uh, that, that flex, all those shields are going to have flex in them. And so gesso on a wood shield works fan fantastically. Um, I do two or three wood shields a year versus I probably do 20 or 30 aluminum shields a year. Um, and so I just don't carry gesso around cause I don't use it. I don't use it fast enough. Okay. Um, however, poor man's gesso. So going to prepping aluminum shields. This is acrylic house paint. I buy this in a, in a gallon at a time for 14 bucks. And whatever color I want my canvas to turn into. So go pick egg white. You can walk into Home Depot, buy whatever is on sale on a base white that you like. It doesn't have to be the perfect white, oh my God. Like I've used eggshell, I've used whatever color. As long as it has the color palette that you like to work in, you can pick up their old paint for like nothing and use it as prep. Acrylic yes. house paint, the reason why I use the acrylic house paint is it takes the flex of aluminum shields better than gesso does um, because it's built to be abused. Um, and so, and it's the same process. I, once, a can, once a shield is dry, oh, allow your shields 24 hours to dry when you glue them. It says you can do it much, much sooner. They lie terribly, <laughs> they lie like dogs. <laughs> it, you end up so frustrated it's unreal so 24 hours in a sunbeam and your shield is ready to to prep i use so once it's dry i will paint that entire shield whatever base color i want it if i want a base color blue i can paint that shield blue like that um i will then sand so get that smoother surface and then reapply um and this uh, i will do this as many times as needed to have that surface as smooth as i want Typically, it only takes two to three times, depending on your canvas grade. The rougher your canvas, the more times you're going to have to do this. The smoother your canvas, the less times. Um, and it's really, really easy. Like, you can just buy 120 grit sandpaper, put it on a block, and just, it'll take you two minutes to smooth out a shield. Run your fingers across it. The first round or two will fuzz up a little bit. You'll end up kind of like with this dusty fuzz because you are eating some of that canvas off. Don't worry about it. You're not actually damaging the process. You're not making your canvas weaker. You're like, it's like defuzzing a set of socks. Like, you'll be fine. Um, so once that happens, this is what you end up with. Nice, bright white. I can run my hands across it and I can't feel the, I can't feel what the canvas um, is made of. Um, I ran out of canvas at one point and used uh, a weave of fabric that is much closer to blue jean at one point. Bad idea. 
Super bad idea. I could never get that smooth enough to paint on. Um, so once that's done, you're ready to paint. Um, in between processes, uh, one of the tricks is you have a dry brush and you have your wet brush. Your wet brush is what you have painted the shield with. Um, it takes, as soon as your, your paint is dry, you can sand and reapply. Um, and acrylic dries really fast. Um, so if you're in a 70 degree day, it takes about 15 minutes between rounds of when you can sand this and prep the sheath. Just literally me and a sunbeam, I get along with sunbeams. Um, as soon as it's dry, you can prep it. So you can, you can finish prepping your shield in an afternoon and get it ready to paint. However, I always have an extra dry brush because in between sandings, brush off your shield with the dry brush. Um, because you will create a dust in there, and when you are applying your next round of paint, if that dust is still on the shield, it's going to like pill up into your, into your next round of paint, which is going to make this process longer. Uh, also, please do this in a place where you're not breathing in the dust. Put on, uh, you can even use a rag because it's a relatively high grit. Please cover your face and your mouth so you're not breathing in paint dust. You're just so hand sanding, right? Yeah, I just do hand sanding. I actually have uh, one of the little sanders um, that I use when I'm doing a bunch of shields. So if I've got like 10 shields out that I'm prepping, I have one of the little electric hand sanders. Um, please make sure that when you're hand sanding, you're paying attention to how much paint you're taking off because those things will very quickly eat through your canvas. Again, know that Light from goodness. experience and learn that over the top of a rivet. So um, I just hand sand most of the time. It's a good arm workout anyways. Switch hands so you get, you know, both even shoulders. Selfish question. Um, I have an aluminum shield, actually just over there, I suppose. Um, and it's already canvassed and gessoed. Mm -hmm. uh, before going to all the effort of painting it, if gesso has a habit of cracking, should I strip that canvas off and start over, would you say? Uh, depends on how long that shield's going to last. Are you painting it for your rain? Uh, no, no, that would already take me way too long. And it is a war shield, so it's not going to face like really heavy use. Um, I think that you're fine then with the war shields. Uh, so my war shields only get like one layer of like whatever I'm doing. And they, I've got ones that have survived three to four years. Because okay. uh, they just don't take the abuse that tourney shields do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think you should be fine. Um, if the gesso is really, really thick on it, I would suggest sanding it down more. Okay. Uh, so you get more flex. The thicker that gesso is, the more brittle it'll be. Okay. So that's yeah. that's what I would do with that. Great tip. Thank I you. Know, I don't know if it helps or not. Oh, there goes my dryer. Sorry. I don't know <laughs> if it helps or not, but um, I'm an art teacher. And one of the things I'll use if I want more flex to the gesso, if I do use gesso, is mixing in what's called a gel medium or a matte medium because it has that acrylic base and stretch and flex to it. And then I'll thin it with water so it's like the consistency of heavy cream. And when I apply it, I'll apply it very thin, but the glue base is really kind of what gives that body and fills yeah. in the tooth of the canvas. So I don't know if that helps anybody, but it seems to have worked pretty well with my shield. Uh, I 100% back That's what awesome. you had to say. Like, I probably look like I'm pointing to some random person, but on my screen, I'm pointing to her. Like, that really, really works. And if you've got the time and you've got the extra, you got the extra stuff to use and you really like using gesso, use the gel medium. Okay, so are we ready for the fun part where you guys get to pepper me with questions about like painting and design and everything else like that? Quick question, um, ceiling, because so we haven't, like my, this is not a good, um, how can I change this? So like, there's a hookah, don't mind it, but um, <laughs> that's a shield. And like, I just, I haven't been able to figure out how to seal it appropriately. So things like this don't just magically happen. What do you do to to finish up so that it it stays well? Because like my shields, I'll get I'll, I'll get I don't know from a crown to a crown, and then usually by then I use the same shield for war and tourney. But by the time the next crown rolls around, usually I need to to redo the whole thing. How do you seal it and keep it nice? Um. So one, reglue as soon as you rip. Um, that's going to be actually, that's going to save the, the life of your shield. A lot of fighters will be like, oh, this ripping the shield. I'm like, if you fix that now, it's not going to go anywhere. And you can do it with the spray glue. Like literally you walk over the spray glue, you go squirt, squirt, wait for it to dry, lay your shield, lay that canvas back down. Because the more rips you have in the shield, it's just going to catch on swords. Now you've, now you've made a weak spot in your shield and in the canvas. Um, treating and sealing, I was going to go over that at the end, but I'll just buzz through that real fast. Um, oh, sorry. 
it's okay. <laughs> um, everything I use is water-based because one, it's easier on cleanup um, and it's a little healthier if you accidentally eat it. I actually use uh, a water-based polyurethane deck spray. Um, and I'll do seven or eight layers of that. Uh, you need to make sure that when you do this, you do not soak your canvas. It's literally, you're gonna learn every one of your friends that has tagged before in their teenage years and the ones that haven't, because they're about to screw up their shields. Um, you're gonna do a light coat because here's the problem. Every sealer out there reactivates acrylic. It will reactivate oil, everything. So they, they reactivate the, the canvas. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay your shield flat as flat as possible. Do not put it against a fence and have it vertical uh, when you do this. Otherwise, you are going to be the saddest panda of all sad pandas. So, you're, <laughs> you're going to lay your shield I've flat. done this so much. Yeah. Uh, I, I learned on the most beautiful shield that was ever given to me, and I cried, and I cried, and it was just terrible. Um, and so, you're going to do a, a thin layer. You're actually going to very lightly treat this and you're gonna come back every couple hours and you're gonna spray another layer. The more layers that you have on there, um, the safer you are from reactivating the paint underneath it. Uh, we do about six to seven layers, and then I go to a paint-on uh, urethane. And that paint-on urethane is gonna go on three to four times thicker than the spray-on urethane. Um, and you literally, it's like bar, putting a bar topper on that thing. Uh, three or four layers of that, and you have this little protective shield on your canvas. It does make your can it does make it when it rips a little bit, it will be a little more brittle. Uh, and so fix your rips fast, otherwise it's gonna crack it's gonna crack everything. And it's kind of interesting to watch. I have a, I have a shield that looks like a shattered uh, stained glass shield now because we put like seven layers of bar topper on it and it's it's shattered out from where it's all all bit hit. It's a very cool effect. Uh, but very bad for your canvas. Uh, Quick so question have you ever experienced yellowing over white paint with the poly? Yes, I have, which is the reason why you do not, you uh, use a, uh, again, experiment with what you get. Mm -hmm. um, that's the reason why I actually use water base, is the water base provides okay. you less yellowing for some weird reason. And I haven't, I haven't delved down that rabbit hole, and I would love to delve down that rabbit hole at some point so I can give people a real answer. Um, but it's one, test it. Like, it's super easy to go run outside and put test white on a piece of scrap and then spray it with your polyurethane, leave it out in the sun, and it will tell you if it's going to yellow or not real fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but I've got, a, I've got a picture of the one I use. Ping me if you want. Um, the one we use, I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, we've tested four or five brands, um, and I've had one brand that very consistently does not yellow white. Oh, that's good. That, um, that, that's great. By the way, the sun is going to yellow any polyurethane over white. End of story. It, the more you leave your shield out in the sun, the more your shield is left out in like your storage shed where it can get light to it. It does not matter what you use, you're gonna see a yellowing and a breakdown um, of that, that protective coating. So when you're not using your shield, just like your helmet, put it in the shade. Okay, so we're gonna go to design. I'm gonna hammer through this and you guys are welcome to send me questions. There's a couple ways of doing this and there's some tricks. One, this stuff right here is gonna be your friend. This is carbon paper. Yes, I love it's carbon paper. Super cheap, by the way. So once you have your shield prepped, this becomes your friend. Um, I very rarely these days draw directly onto canvas. Um, what you can do is I actually will take a tracing. So I'm actually gonna unfold this sucker for you real quick. I make tracings of everything. So this, is exactly the size of the shield that this was designed for. And then I drew it onto a heavy duty um, tracing paper. Um, so one, I can give the fighter the art. Uh, so when I'm done doing a shield, uh, most of the time it's like, I'm never doing this shield again. Here's the art, I will teach you how to do it yourself. Um, but now they have a carbon copy of the art that was on their shield. Um, and I can manipulate this and erase on this much easier than I can directly on the canvas. Because remember, your pencil will always show through acrylic no matter how many times you try. Um, so that's the first sheet. So there is, I'm going to just put out there that there is a ton of clip art. There is open source imaging. There is a lot of other stuff out there that you can use to then transfer onto a shield. So if you can't draw or a fighter can't draw, you can find them the imaging. Here's my weird spiel. 
do not steal somebody else's art without their permission. You will find that most SCA artists are super happy to give over their art for absolutely nothing. That is hours of an artist's life. Do not take an image without permission. Clip art is free and open source. You can use it as much as you want. There's tons of resources for period images out there. Um, so drawing on tracing paper on the size of your shield is gonna give you an image that you can play with and futz with much easier than directly drawing onto a shield. Um, carbon paper is super cheap. I think this was, this was 389 for 20 sheets. Uh, and one sheet will last, a single sheet will last me three shields. Um, also, it gives you the ability to just put as much stuff on there as you want. So design wise, um, also you can use projectors by the way, they make like little phone projectors that you could sketch out something and then project it onto the shield and then trace it. It's phenomenal. It makes your life so much easier. Um, I've also found um, for like, if you have a dark colored background, I have found white graphite paper on Amazon. Uh, yeah, also, um, there's chalk paper that you can use. Oh. Uh, it's a sewing thing. Uh, and it comes nice. blue, yellow, and red. That's uh, amazing. Thank you. I don't like the transfer on chalk paper as much as I like carbon paper, but it's fine. So, I will tell you that compound curves, like this one, this one's actually completely drawn on. Oh, my God. I, I directly draw on the compound curves because you need to be able to look at how it's going to mess with the eye. Um, this is where we'll have the arts moments in time. The eye travels in a circle. It's how our brain works. Uh, this is the one thing that my mom taught me uh, that is really cool on shields. Shields all have motion to them. Um, so it, it'll always tend to start at the top corner. Right-handers go right, left-handers go left. So just so you know, that's our brain is very, very simple. Then you just have to manipulate it. So typically, it will start at the top corner and go around. So your center grip shields are fantastic because, well, it already gives you the circular image on it. So you can build your art to follow that arc on the shield. Heater shields are a little bit different because you've got your corners and there's nothing to stop the eye in the center. It will still follow the same pattern. You're gonna start at the top of the shield, they're gonna go to the tail, and they typically will stall out at the tail. Amusingly enough, they're not gonna trace back up one side of the shield. Uh, however, still keep your art balanced, it's just kind of an OCD weirdness in mind. Um, so overall, you can put almost anything on a shield. There's open source imaging everywhere to use. Um, and you shouldn't be afraid to ask an artist to use their art. As long as you've got permission, 90% of the time they're gonna be like, you wanna paint that? Hell yes, here, like all of my Scythian stuff, I'm like, you wanna use that on a shield? Please have that, I'll send you the digital file. Is there any questions about layout and some of the tricks here? So how full is too full? Um, oh. <laughs> Actually, sorry, that's a great thing. You just actually spurred something on. Always mark your edges. Um, so your edging is gonna eat an inch and a half. Your center boss is gonna eat an inch and a half. That is dead space you should not paint. Um, make sure your background color goes into it, but don't put art into that because then it looks like it's falling off the shield and it looks like you haven't thought out your process. Just mark that out, take a, take a protractor, run it around the edge of your shield, run it around your shield boss. Don't use that. Um, there is actually really, it depends on your art style on what's too much. So um, like if you're doing an early period or like a gelling, a gelling style shield, um, they had a lot of flow and a lot of little intricate stuff in their art. Um, I like to use the 10 to 15 foot rule. If I can't understand what it is at 10 to 15 feet, no fighter is going to in a helmet. Um, and so I try to simplify my art down to that point. Um, but there's actually a bunch of like little hidden things that I will put into a shield uh, for my own personal amusement. Like I've put hash, hatch marks inside hatch marks. You can't tell unless you're like up against the shield, but it made my little muse happy. Um, when it comes to like large, large items, so like you're looking at charges, you're looking at some of the backgrounds, you need to make sure your charge is clear enough that it doesn't get lost in the background. Like, you're not making an oil painting. Um, it's not going to be something that it's everything is in motion all the time with a shield. So you want your charge bold and basically in charge uh, in charge of the of the artwork. So if you think of that as the centerpiece, you're going to use that as the centerpiece to control the eye. Um, does that help? Cool. Do you, um, yeah. Do you have a, a specific type and or brand of paints you like to use because I'll be honest 
like your shield paintings are vibrant and beautiful and clear. And I'm just wondering what specific like paints you use. Um, I actually use basic, like the brand is called basic. Uh, it's basic acrylics, but I buy, um, I don't buy the in-between colors. Um, I use very stark, different colors between. And then if I need to create a fade between the two colors, I'll actually just mix the two colors. Do you, uh, do you buy those online or what store do you get them from? Uh, we have a local art store that I like, I head to all the time. Uh, basic, you can buy them online. You can buy them at almost any art store. Sorry if I'm waylaying questions, guys. I apologize. I'm I super buy them terrible. In large tubes at a time. If you're doing a background, a background. They is sell gonna, those at Michael's D. Yeah. Thank uh, you. A background is going to eat one of these. Okay. So, um, also, if you are just starting out, Basic makes a palette. Ooh. So get the palette like it's i think it's like 35 bucks for the palette of them it gives you a huge range of colors to play with you can figure out what your eye likes and what um is contrasting um my my advice there with contrasting is always go one or two colors darker or away from the color you think you need uh our eyes, in a, in a Western modern sense for art, our eyes like a lot of muted colors. We like a lot of like soft blends and everything else like that because that's the current, that's a current modern view on art versus like shields are meant to be like, we are bold, we are here. <laughs> so, always think about that. Like you can, you can use obnoxious colors on shields and then when you're 15 feet away, you're like, oh, I actually understand what that charge is because you, you made that leap and you weren't like <coughs> halfway through all my shields. My husband can tell you that halfway through the shields, I'm like, oh, I suck at this and this sucks and I'm using the wrong colors and nothing else. And then by the time it's done, you can set it down and you can understand what is on the shield versus like I've done a couple muted shields and they just disappear. They, they fall away into their own colors and they kind of turn into a blur. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid to use stark colors. Don't be afraid to use that like two or three colors bolder than you thought you needed um, because it's going to give you that pop that a lot of people really, really want in their shields. Thanks, awesome. Grace. <laughs> Do you ever paint the shield boss? Um, I hate painting shield bosses, but yes. It's the fact that shield boss cracks a lot. That too. Um, so that, that, Acrylic has a lot of flex to it. So when you hit acrylic on a shield boss, what ends up happening is the acrylic flexes and the shield boss doesn't. Mm. Uh, and so you actually will come with like that, sh that paint will just peel away. Um, and so if you're gonna paint a shield boss, what I recommend is actually using like a 200 grit sandpaper and go and just mess up that boss. Like just put a little hate into it for a minute and you're gonna <laughs> give that paint a better grip when you're painting on it. Um, it does make it an absolute bear to clean off later. So if you're going to clean that off later, put it to a grinder. Like you're going to grind that whole thing down again to get it prepped. Um, and the same thing goes for plastic, by the way. Always, if you're painting plastic and it's not canvas plastic, you have to rough up the surface. Uh, plastic is super slick. And what's going to end up happening is that paint will literally just separate from it and slide off of it. Um, and so anything metal, anything, and also if you're going to, flat paint and aluminum shield, same idea. Um, is if it's metal or if it's plastic, go put a little hate onto it because otherwise your paint is not gonna stick. Put a little hate onto it. <laughs>